Um, thanks, Megan, and thanks everyone for the opportunity to um, share this work with you. Um, I felt that I should begin by talking about why I'm here, because I do feel very much like a fish out of water. Um, so Derek Hoy made an approach to me in January and um, talked about vocabularies being an excellent platform to de-silo research and that he wondered whether or he thought he could see how the work that I'm doing could help design and implement projects that use a wide variety of specialist teams by standardising language. And in February, Rowan invited me to give a seminar um, saying the following, the semantic and practical approaches to making the vocabulary, et cetera. You can read that for yourselves. And um, <laughs> if I knew what any of that meant, I'd feel much more comfortable about being here, but I don't. Um, so, um, so bear with me. So I thought, so I thought I'd start with what it is that we're talking about. And um, it's a website that I run, which is a blog and a repository. It aims to share resources and build a community. Uh, it started in November 2015. Um, it's had uh, actually more than 470 contributions, um, a slew of authors from not as many countries as I'd like. It's read almost everywhere and every contribution gets about 800 or so views. And um, it's indexed on 14 main topics um, or, or categories as WordPress calls them. So it's a WordPress website and tags and 11 resource types, which are also categories, but there are no tags related to those. And to illustrate um, what those topics are. I'm, I'm just going to give you this and then I'm going to go back and talk about what, what it's all about. But um, figuring out the order to present things in was also a bit challenging. So anyway, there are 14 main topics which you can read here. So every contribution that people make is categorised on one of these, one or more of these main topics. Um, there are several hundred tags and this gives you just um, a flavour of what those tags look like. And then there are also uh, the resource types. So is what people are sending in a method or a process or a theory, etc. So that's the vocabulary um, in kind of brief that we're talking about. Um, every blog post or contribution is then um, categorized as follows. So um, they're categorized, it's category, so is, is then indexed as follows. So the categories are here. So this one's um, indexed under one main topic, diversity, and two resource types, frameworks and theories. And then there are a bunch of tags here and uh, the authors there. And this is actually the blog post that Derek Hoy saw that caught his attention and um, what that's worth. All right. So having given you what the where, where the vocabulary is and what it's attached to, let me give you the story behind it. So um, started, this work started in around 2000. So integration and implementation sciences is a discipline that I've argued we need that aims to improve the, academic, the ability of academics to tackle complex problems, um, complex societal and environmental problems. And I often use this um, sculpture by Tim Spellman on ANU campus called Cooler's Ripple as an example. So if we think of um, this as representing reductionist theory and methods and complexity-based theory and methods, in an ideal world, we'd be good at both of those. And I argue that currently we're really good at reductionist theory and methods and we're not terribly good at complexity-based theory and methods. And what I'm trying to do is to think about how do we get better at helping people deal with complex societal and environmental problems? How do we make that more feasible? So the first place I looked was who's doing that kind of work now. And there are a bunch of areas that have defined this as their business. So the interdisciplinarians and the transdisciplinarians and the systems thinkers, the complexity scientists, not surprisingly, the action researchers, the sustainability scientists, et cetera, et cetera. 
the challenge is that these don't talk to each other. And let me just go back. And well, these don't talk to each other. And um, so you've got these multiple communities of practice, if you like, who are all trying to think about how to deal with complexity and they're all doing it quite independently of each other. And that makes it quite difficult for people to get kind of a general view of what's happening. And so I2S or Integration and Implementation Sciences thinks of itself as the kind of plumbing that tries to bring all these together and provide a way to share resources. Um, as I said, there are strong overlaps between these, but they're currently fragmented. And nobody else has tried to make it their business um, to, to kind of link things. The other way that they're differentiated is on the problem type. So the people who tackle problems in sustainability don't tackle, don't share myths with the people who tackle problems in population health, for example. So again, you've got this fragmentation, both a, around approaches and around problem type. So just to say a little bit more about what integration and implementation sciences tries to do, it's trying to develop a more comprehensive understanding of a complex problem, uh, both what is known and what is not known. It's trying to provide a greater range of ways of addressing the problem, including thinking about what might not work as well as might, what might work. And it's trying to uh, not take action itself, but to support those who are taking action. And they might be policymakers or practitioners, and they might be in government or business or, and civil, or civil society. And so what I2S is trying to do is it's trying to bring together methods to develop a more complex understanding, um, methods, tools, processes, frameworks to try to develop a greater range of ways of addressing problems and then ways of um, supporting those who are actually taking action. So let me just say a little bit about uh, the vocabulary and how it came about. Um, I'm going to talk about 11 of the 14 main topics um, as kind of the focal point for this. So I'm going to leave out three of them, the ones that are crossed out, um, because 11 of them are, are, are what the contribution is about. And the other three are kind of adjunct categories. So this is about it, the, the unspoken <laughs> piece of this is that this is focused on researchers and research. So these are all relevant to research, but we also welcome contributions that are about education and evaluation and how to institutionalise this way of thinking and approaching the world. So um, a bit of important background information. So um, if we just focus on transdisciplinarity, which is, um, uh, but it's also true for systems thinking and action research and all the rest of them, they don't have, as far as I'm aware, a, a, a systematic way of being indexed in libraries. And I know that they don't have FOR codes because I've been involved in trying to get FOR codes made. So um, there's no kind of established way of cataloguing or indexing uh, work that is that is about this kind of stuff. And also what's important is that nobody much cares. Um, I didn't much care um, until I started to work with an information scientist um, and she kind of turned me on to the fact that this is actually really important stuff, which um, you all know. So, just to say a little bit about how the main topics were developed, it's been a three-way toggle, if you like, so things informing everything else and things have matured um, over the last 20 plus years. So I do a lot of work trying to develop the theory of integration and implementation sciences and the kind of methods that are involved. Um, it also has kind of an empirical base. So every week we publish an I2 Insights contribution. So a contribution from somebody in the world who works on complex problems, who has something to say about how to tackle these problems more effectively. And I index those contributions. And so um, it, it's also what makes sense in trying to index them. And then, it, as I said, um, an information sciences colleague, Karen Anderson, who's who from time to time has been in a position to provide input 
and I should say that um, my naivety here is no reflection on her that <laughs> uh, it's or, or her competence. It's it's um, a matter of happenstance and circumstance when we can and cannot uh, work together, and what I've been able to absorb from what she's been trying to teach me. So the current state of play from my perspective is I think that the main categories, the main topics uh, categories work pretty well. Uh, they work pretty well from the perspective of the theory for I2S and they work pretty well in terms of indexing what comes in each week. I've got no idea how well they work from an information science perspective. Um, the tags need more work. Um, the tags don't easily map onto the categories and I think they should. Um, some tags are not much used and so they probably shouldn't be there, but they're there at the moment because the repository is still quite incomplete. Um, and the level of generality in the tags is highly variable. So some are about um, something quite large like modelling and some are about fairly sim single uh, obscure concepts or tools. Um, I just thought I'd say a little bit more about the tags not mapping easily onto categories, on, onto the main topics. So some tags like modelling fit into different categories so that modelling can be about communication or decision making or integration or research implementation or stakeholder engagement or unknowns. Uh, so that's six of the categories, six of the main topics right there. And so it's never going to fit. Um, so there's never going to be a one to one. If you have this category, you're going to have this tag, or if you have this tag, it's got to be in that category. Um, and not all tags fit a main topic. So there are some like complex problems and expertise and transdisciplinarity that don't kind of fit into the way that I've been thinking about main topics. I don't know if that's a problem or not, and I'd be really interested in some discussion on whether or not it is. So I guess I've becoming, been becoming more aware of the responsibilities um, that come with defining a field. So, I mean, in essence, I've set up um, a discipline that I argue for, I've defined what it is. Um, to give you an example, recently, um, there was a blog post on facilitated modelling and I tagged it as participatory modelling. But in the field of modelling, this is still an unresolved debate. The participatory modellers argue that it facilitated modelling is a form of participatory, uh, participatory modelling, but the facilitated modellers don't necessarily agree. Um, so that, you know, there are decisions that I make that um, well, they're not consequential because it's not that the work's not really that important in the field, but it could be consequential at some stage. Um, it's pretty clear to me that Others need to be involved in choosing the categories and tags, but there are two problems. One is, as I said, people aren't very interested, and the other is that people don't have the same kind of level of expertise. And so um, I've, I guess I've been thinking about it a lot more than anybody else that I know. And so it's, um, it's tricky to then work with people who've got less expertise to try to co-create something. So... Um, that's kind of the key issues that I see at the moment. So I'm really interested after we've heard Erin's uh, contribution that I'm really looking forward to in um, what you've got to say. And um, I've provided uh, Megan with a, with a copy of these slides for anybody who's interested. And here's a bunch of ways of, of getting in touch, um, which uh, I'd be great grateful to have more conversation with anybody who's interested.